Now, each day of this year's event here on Cybos TV, we'll be speaking to leading financial journalists and getting their take on what we've seen across a packed schedule of sessions. All of it is must-see content, of course, but what from yesterday has caught the eye of our experts? Well, today we're joined by Sophie Jackson, publisher and head of strategic content for Treasury Today, and once again by reporter for Cybos Issues, Heather McKenzie. Welcome both. Welcome. Hi. Good morning. Great to have you on Cybos TV. So, uh, Heather, let's start with yourself. A theme yesterday was banking on change, and some of the changes banks faced were outlined by theoretical physicist, the very brilliant Dr. Michio Kaku, as he opened the InnoTribe session. How did he relate the technological advances and technologies that he spoke about to the financial industry? Uh, thanks. Yes, he, he was um, very interesting. He's, he's best known, apparently, for his work on string theory, um, but I'm none the wiser on that, so I won't, uh, <laughs> won't uh, talk about string theory. Um, he, like all futurists, he, he kind of had, he was pretty out there in a lot of what he was saying. Um, one of my favourite uh, sort of concepts he talked about was uh, digital wallpaper, where you, um, you will end up, you'll be able to talk to your walls and send emails, and when you're bored with your walls, you can change the colour and pattern. Uh, which is an extension of the flexible screen technology that we're beginning to see in uh, marketed, commercially marketed in things like the smartphones that kind of, you know, you can bend. Uh, so eventually um, you'll have like reams of this stuff that you can put on your walls. But um, that aside, uh, he took, he, he argues, his argument was that physics is, is the real wealth generator, the science of physics. And it, we had thermodynamics, which you know created all the wealth for the Rockefellers, and and we're in, there's five waves that he talked about, um, and he related that to to finance to the Cybos audience by saying that ultimately artificial intelligence and quantum computers will uh, will sort of help remove the middleman, and will get us towards perfect capitalism, and. Um, uh, we're moving away from commodity capitalism, the products of, of our hands, to the products of our minds, um, to perfect capitalism. And um, ultimately, you know, financial institutions will be able to sort of mine the mountains of meaningless data, as he called it, um, to enable them to, to sort of prospect for data and um, generate a lot of wealth. So... Um, while talking to their walls, I guess. So it was it was a fun session, and um, and it was yeah, it was really interesting. I I recommend people to uh, catch up on it if they missed it. Now, Sophie, I want to bring you in now. You work in the space of corporate gender equality, inclusion, and diversity with your Women in Treasury initiative. What were some of your takeaways from the business case for serving the women's market session from yesterday? Yeah, thank you so much, first of all. But I think um, connecting with what Heather was speaking about, the whole of this year's Cybos, I think, has got such a drive for an inclusive global economy. And as she mentioned, Kaku spoke about creativity in product development. And that involves having different people creating different types of products to service different people. So I loved seeing the business case for serving women on the agenda. And it's just part of a series that Cybos have got running with the Financial Alliance for Women, um, with a series of different sessions hosted by Inez Murray. Um, and I think it's about understanding that we're not just talking about diversity because we want to have different people represented in organisations, but it's also because if we want to have the transformative, innovative future of financial products, you need to have different minds and different ideas and different backgrounds coming together in order to develop them for new types of communities. 100%. And uh, coming over to yourself, Heather, diversity also featured in some of the sessions that you covered yesterday. Tell us about what you heard. Uh, yes, I, I and, and my colleague Neil Anger, who's, who's also reporting on um, Cybos issues, uh, we, we heard a bit about diversity. And as, as Sophie says, that, that idea that you're bringing different thinking into um, financial institutions. Uh, so one of the sessions I, I was looking at was the um, one on financial crime. And uh, Paul Jevtovic of, of National Australia Bank was uh, talking about this sort of diversity of thought and um, they, you know, the panel were talking about bringing in academia and NGOs and um, regulators and law enforcement agencies. And Paul was talking about bringing in customers. You know, he said, you talk to customers about products and services. So why not talk to them about 
the the um, systems that you have for fighting financial crime. And uh, Neil was uh, in the data technology session. And, um, and and again, in that session, they talked about the same things, about this sort of diversity of, of thought and um, input that needs to needs to come in um, in 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 uh, sort of, you know, getting the most out of data. And, and a few years ago, I spoke to someone from a French bank who said that they now, um, when they recruit, they don't look at the traditional um, uh, higher education institutions that they used to look at mm-hmm. because, you know, they need this diversity. They need new, fresh ideas and creativity, as, as Sophie said. So they're looking sort of further afield and not at the really traditional kind of, I suppose, the sort of French equivalent of, uh, you know, the Sorbonne sort of universities and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. so it's, uh, it's really interesting to see that, mm-hmm. you know, diversity is, I guess, hopefully being taken seriously. Now, Sophie, as well as diversity, what were some of the highlights from the conversations and topics from yesterday for you? Well, I guess, I mean, I think you can't really separate conversations about diversity anymore. And as the CEO of SWIFT said at the beginning, we're looking at a new transformation of an industry. We've had the COVID crisis that's happened. But we're, an inclusive economy just means that there's going to be better ideas in general. And to be honest, this year's Cyboss lineup, I was so excited because I feel like there's been such a push for change in many areas of the financial service industry for a long time um, in terms of product development, in terms of the kind of people that are working there, in terms of the kind of communities that we want to work with. But if you look at the lineup this year I was just so excited across the board there is everybody represented there are so many different organizations I've never seen speaking before coming to the table and so I think we're looking at a new future of collaboration um, which is going to really drive the next best generation of Mm. finance so for me the whole thing's been a highlight but I would say the view from the top with the OCBC CEO was a highlight for me and I'm really looking forward to later on today because there's a lot of things I've had earmarked for a while that are going Mm. to be coming up today. What a lovely note to end on. Sophie Jackson and Heather McKenzie, thank you for joining Cyboss TV.